Yeah, I'm ready. It's like you're back there judging me. You're like, okay, so we're live. Um, welcome to On Set. On this, uh, I'm gonna get back. Every like third one, I start doing this and I stop. I'm, this is the 30th of November, 2017. Uh, I am Daniel Norton, this is Dave. Seth's over here doing the mix. It's not working. Okay, I got wires and stuff coming off my computer. And today we're going to do, um, I'm gonna stand over here because there's all kinds of commotion going on. I don't know if you guys said. Um, we're gonna do single light portraits, so we're gonna work with one light, because I think a lot of people, when they first start, and they start with one light, right? So why not do that? Um, we, um, we're gonna go through several kind of uh, portrait ideas. I'm gonna work this light until I can't work it anymore, and then we're gonna go, go on. Um, I will try to state all the stuff that I'm using as I go through, as always, and I will stop doing it at some point. And if I don't say what I'm using, just uh, tell me. We do have a, a brand new light, and it is yellow. Um, we have the Honey Badger from uh, Interfit. I get asked a lot when I do these because I normally use Pro Photo lights. Um, hey, can Daniel, can you use something a little more affordable? And we were at Photo Plus, and we saw the Honey Badger. It's new from Interfit. Um, it's a... Uh, more yellow than the other people who make yellow lights. So, uh, no, but it's gonna be a, an affordable light kind of in the vein of the Alien B. Um, so it's like that, uh, but it does have a built-in radio receiver. So I have the radio, so we're gonna be able to control it that way. Uh, unlike the Pro Photo lights that, that I sometimes use, it doesn't have TTL, so we will use a handheld meter today. Um, this one is, do we know how powerful this is? Do we, it's a 320, so it's 320 watt seconds. Okay, so it's 320 watt seconds, if anybody cares. Um, this is, it comes with, uh, the soft box as well. So you got like a little kit right out of the box and it's like 300 and something dollars. 2.99. 2.99, you guys can pay 360, the extra money goes to me. So, uh, so yeah, it's a pretty good deal. Um, we'll see how it works out. I really have not used it before because that's how I like to roll. So we're gonna see how this works out. Um, and here we go. Uh, Marissa's not here yet, so I just have to, I'm gonna juggle. You're gonna give me things to juggle until Marissa gets, no, we'll use Fernando. Fernando! Fernando comes down every time he needs a new Facebook profile picture. <laughs> so we have Fernando here. Okay, so, <laughs> so there's a few ways to approach this. And uh, the way that I'm gonna start is, so I can show kind of what the light's doing and we're gonna talk about positioning, is by starting by eliminating all the light in the space. When you only have one light, you know, you can have an extra light by using the light in the space, right? Um, in this case, I'm gonna turn that light off. You can think of it like that. So every time when you only have one light, you really have two, right? You've got the light that's there, which could be the sun, it could be a window, it could be all this light we have in Adorama, um, and then you've got your flash. And in this case, it happens to be a uh, honey. Really like oh, thank you. So I got my uh, uh, hair cut, and we donated it to, uh, to uh, Locks of Love. Uh, so um, it was a live stream, so if anybody wants to see a really embarrassing video of me, uh, you know. Um, Seth was throwing things at me. It was kind of a mess. It's on, it's on your Facebook. It's on my Facebook. So you can check that out if you're actually interested. Um, <laughs> apparently people were, so that was kind of cool. But yeah, we donated it, so it's kind of nice. I'm working on my next batch now. Um, Fernando's going to grow his beard out for donation. Anyways, you've got two light sources, um, your flash and your available or ambient light. If for the first uh, series, I'm going to turn off the available light. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to not thinking at all about my, my flash system, not thinking at all about the, the monolight, I'm going to set my camera so that when I make a photo, it is black, right? I get no exposure. The way I do that is I set my ISO at the lowest ISO within its normal range. But in the case of this camera, which is a Canon EOS 1DX, is Marissa, um, I'm gonna set it at 100. That's the lowest ISO within its normal range. I'm going to set my shutter speed at the highest shutter speed in which it can synchronize with flash. That happens to be 250 with this camera. Um, hey, Marissa. Hi. This is Marissa. Um, so, uh, oh, look. How do I know it was your leaf? I just found it on the ground. How do I know it's not mine? I brought it in. Did anybody see this lady with this leaf earlier? Okay, fine. It's your leaf. Okay. I was going to give it to you. All right, so... Um, yeah, I'm easily distracted by shiny things. <laughs> so 250 is the maximum shutter speed. I will say when you're working with uh, radio systems, sometimes they have a maximum speed, and I don't know if this one does or not. So we may not be able to go to 250. I guess we're going to find out. Um, 
Yeah. So we're going to start at 250 and or 200, which is kind of common for most Canon cameras. And uh, the final thing, which is your aperture, that will be determined by where you are. Right? If I'm in a very dark space, my aperture might be f4 or even 2.8. If I'm in a very bright space, it might have to be f16. Whatever it needs to be to get the space dark, that's the aperture. We don't really know what it's going to be. Um, there's a few ways you can figure it out. Number one, you could just take some pictures, right, randomly, um, usually starting around f8 because that's the middle range of your camera. A better way might be to use a light meter. Uh, and everybody here has a light meter probably because there's one in your camera, right? So. The camera has a light meter on top. If you look at that little thing, it goes back and forth, usually zero to negative three plus three. Move it all the way over to the negative three. Take a picture, that should get you a black frame. Um, I'm in capture one right here. So we're actually at a 5.6 ISO 100 at one 200th of a second. And we can see the frame is black. There's nobody in it. There's nobody in it though. Usually when you're doing this, it's smart to have your model there because once she steps in, she might change it because you know she's a different tone. Um, than the background and also she's standing in a different spot. So that is somewhat important Like if you just shoot it randomly in the room and you know, so shoot it where the person's gonna be standing Which I think Dave just took another picture. Um, I'm gonna go over to my uh, Exposure adjustment and the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to see how much underexposed I am It looks dark, black to my eye, but I want to be sure so I'm going to first of all I can look at my histogram over here and uh, ever since they first came out with digital cameras many, many years ago, they have histograms in them. I have no idea what it does. But anyways, it's over there. You can look at it. No, this means it's dark because it's on that side. Uh, if I pull my histogram over, um, I just pull it over until I start to see her. There she is. She's making a funny face as usual. Um, that's about two and a half stops roughly before we see her, right? Now I know. I'm about two and a half stops underexposed. That's pretty good, right? That means that if in post... I want to bring up my shadows or something, I have some room to move without before I start pulling the, nat, the available light into my shot. Which in this case is going to be the wrong color temperature, so I definitely don't want that, but it's also coming from weird angle, um, et cetera. So I think I'm pretty good at a 5.6. We may mess around with it, but that's where we'll start. So now that we've established that, um, we turn the flash on and we have a radio system. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this depending on what we're doing, right? You have to think about two different things. You have to think about coverage and, and, uh, and power, right? So the closer I have my light to my subject in general, using the same modifier, the less coverage I'll have, right? Because the softbox, it hits the front of the softbox, it spreads out, right? If I move my box in like really close, I'm not going to, let's say, light her legs. You know, if I want to shoot her from the ground up, then I need to make sure I back my box up. If I do that, it's going to make the light more hard because the smaller your light source is, the harder it, it will be and that's relative to your subject. I'll talk about hard and soft in a second, but so just know that if you back the light up, it's going to become more hard because it's going to become smaller. Closer will become softer, right? Easy as that. You can also move the Marissa, <laughs> right? That also works. Um, so we're gonna shoot like, you know, I don't know, waist up or at the most, so this is probably pretty good. This is like a two footish uh, softbox. Um, and what we're gonna do is, Dave's going to take the light meter, he's going to put the parameters in that we have, 200th of a second, 100 ISO, he's going to point the light meter at the light, he will fire the flash, F8, perfect. So now we know the light is at F8. Um, <laughs> the camera set at 5.6, which means if we take a photo right now, it'll be overexposed. All right? Or we could just shoot at F8, I mean, we could. we could do that, but let's just turn it down, why not? Yeah, this is the Dave space. So yeah, we're going to turn the light down and stop, did you do that? Okay, Dave's gonna turn the light down one stop, which I think you can do with the remote. Mm -hmm. It's pretty exciting, beep, 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 beeps. Um, They're asking if this would be ideal for smaller spaces. Uh, so would this light be good for a small space? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. 320 watts seconds is a decent amount of power. I typically say, which is, seems counterintuitive, the smaller space you have, the larger the modifier you should put on your light. Um, and the reason I say that is because you can't back it up, right, what I just said. Right? If, I, if I need to cover, let's say this is all the space I have. Let's say there's a wall right here. I can't, with this softbox, cover Marissa head to toe. But if I had a, a big light, right, then I would. So small space, big modifier. That way you don't have to move it around. All right, so did you let's, want to remeter it? Five, six. Right, if we can see that's five, six. It's pretty much right on. Too. Okay, it's hard to see it. You have to trust me. Yep. So it's 5.6 now. You can be, we'll ask an audience member. Do a Gavin Hoey. <laughs> <laughs> do a Gavin Hoey. Okay, what did he do? He shows the model and she goes, yes. Oh. What number is it? I don't know if Marissa knows her numbers yet. 
Oh, it was you, I know though. I one through ten. No, okay. Well, that's all you need to know. All right, good. He asked her, actually. It was Marissa, yes. Okay, so we know that she doesn't know how to read the light meter. In any case, the light set at 5.6 now. So we've got our light set up. This is just very, very basic. It's coming from one side. So remember that wherever the light is not will be a shadow. And our shadows will be completely dark for the most part because there's none of the ambient light affecting our shot. So if I put my light to the side, she's going to have shadow on that side of her face. Right? Simple as that. So let's take a shot and see what that looks like. Hopefully all that's true, and then we can move. Before you made the light, was it full power? Hmm. What power is the light set on? Oh, yeah, there she is. It's at uh, a five, so it's one stop over the minimum, I think. What does this light go to? Do we know? Seven. 11. This light goes to 11. <laughs> Seven stops, but do you know the number? The, so 10, probably. So did well, the light the, the goes to... The number is at five now. I think the bottom is four. The bottom is four. The top is right. 10, probably. Let's see. Go yeah, up. the readout. Of... We've really never used this before. I wasn't making that up. Yeah. So it goes from four to 10, basically. Uh, it was at four. Yep. No, it's at five. It's, it's, it's at, at five six. now. It was at six. Yeah. So... Okay. So we can see here... That, uh, you know, there's Marissa. She looks very shiny. Um, you know, the light is, has a, a kind of a soft quality. You can see our shadow transition from the, uh, the neutral to the shadow. You see this, uh, there's not a hard line here. Um, that indicates a soft light. That's because the light itself, the light source itself is bigger than Marissa's head. So we've got decent coverage. We've got decent light on her. That's not terrible. Um, thanks for coming, guys. I uh, hope you liked the light. It was pretty good. Uh, no, but okay, so right now, um, this is a very basic setup. Now, generally speaking, when I'm shooting women, I like to light from the center, but we're going to start at the side because we're just here right now. And the reason I say that is because shadow is how you uh, emphasize texture, right? So any place that there's going to be a shadow is going to be extra texture, right? So I don't necessarily want lots of texture. Like you can even kind of see it. I mean, there happens to also be a blemish right there. You have a blemish right there. Um, but uh, you can see more, more texture. You can see it right there. See, I'm, I'm, watch me highlight it. There it is. There it is. Okay. Um, yeah, this is. Yeah, there she is. So, right. I'm just pointing it out. It's important that models understand that when they have a blemish, so they know how to work it. Yeah. Um, we could do a couple. So, anyways, on, the, on this point, though, um, the light's coming from this direction. We're creating texture which generally isn't necessarily what you want when shooting uh, women. Usually women, you know, the ideal, the beauty ideal is to have smooth, you know, skin, which is like impossible to have unless you're a baby. But, you know, that's the ideal that we try to shoot for. So, um, but shadow does uh, create mystery as well. So depending if you're going for more of a character style portrait, you may want to add more shadow. It really depends on what you're going for. Um, we generally place our light so that it's, you know, we, we've got it roughly the center-ish of the boxes around eye level. So we get coverage across her body. Um, and you can see it is actually light in the background a bit too. The background is not black, so we know the light's hitting it. Because remember, with no flash, the background is black. It's a dark gray because the light's further from the background, you know, proportionately than it is from her. Does that all make sense so far? These are all things that you want to take into consideration because remember, we only have one light. So I can't suddenly say, oh, hey, let's put another light on there for Phil or let's do whatever. I have to work with what I've got. So if you, um, for instance, if I wanted less shadow on her face, I could move my light so that it was in the center. Or I could have her look towards the light even. If she's looking towards the light, all the shadow will go this way, right? And then it'll be behind her. Right? And now her face has even light across her face. You don't have you know, any shadow on her, her, on her face. It's nice and even texture. I mean, you're still going to see that blemish. <laughs> but it's not as bad. Um, and you can see, again, softish light coming this way. Oh, you have like sparklies in your lipstick. It's cute. Um, and there we go. <laughs> Questions about that. Simple, right? Let's add a reflector because that's what you're going to want to do. As soon as you have one light, you're going to want to use a reflector. That's like kind of key. You can get, should we use a special reflectors from Brooklyn? Well, we got that. Oh, okay. We'll use this one. Seth isn't authorizing me to use his reflector anymore because he's actually already sold out for the holiday season, so he doesn't want to like get too many. <laughs> All right. So. No, no. <laughs> this is um, an oval. This one is from Glow, I believe, which is the, the house brand. Um, I keep saying Flashpoint, but apparently Glow is what they call them now. Um, it's a five-in-one reflector, meaning it's got multiple surfaces. You've got your white, you've got your gold. I feel like one of those guys said, you got the white, they got the gold. Um, and inside, if you switch this, you can get black, 
silver, right? Or you got translucent, which we're actually probably going to use too. So these are super useful. I use them especially uh, outside because you got all those options. In fact, the video we just did on Monday where I do headshots with Sharina, um, I use the diffusing part of it uh, outside. Yep. And when I say I use, Dave held it. <laughs> all right. So um, I'm going to use the gold. I know, it's weird, right? But I'm gonna do it because I'm gonna bounce the light from the back a little bit and see if I can fill in a little bit of that shadow. And since Marissa has reddish golden hair, I think it might actually look nice. So we do have a modeling light here that Dave can turn on and off. I think it's an LED, it looks like it. I love, he's, he's yelling specs from the back, I like it. Um, so I think that's... Can you kill that? Because I can't tell if I'm... Just kill that one for now, so we can see it better. Excited? All right. So we got the gold. There we go. It's filled in. You know, she's nice and warm on that side. You know, she's got a sweater. I don't normally use a gold. Uh, you probably watch this a lot, and I hope I'd, but I kind of think it works. So every tool has its purpose, right? A lot of times people say, well, you use the gold one. It doesn't always work, but I think the warmth of it kind of works with her hair. It works with kind of the sweater. It gives a little separation and um, fills in that side, right? Makes sense? Simple, right? Background's still the way it is. If we wanted the background to go, I don't know, darker, what we would need to do is, uh, I mean, if you have all the space in the world, you can just keep getting further and further away from it. But the other way is literally just don't point the light at the background. I mean, it sounds simple, right? But like we're, we're pointing the light like this, so it's hitting the background. So if Dave feathers the light off this way, right, he can actually get the light so it's not going to hit the background. It's just as simple as that. Um, you, can, you can still look generally in the direction of it. We're probably going to have to adjust. We'll re-meter we'll re it. This is not terrible so far. Welcome. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody asked online about umbrella versus. So, umbrellas are great. Um, they, uh, you can get a similar quality of light with an umbrella, sure. The main difference between an umbrella and a softbox is going to be control of light. An umbrella generally is throwing the light everywhere, right? So if I use a, a, a let's say a shoot through umbrella, meaning that you're using a translucent type umbrella and you're putting that side towards the model, so you got diffusion you know, facing the model, it will look similar. You'll get around catch light, it'll give a, a creamy light to the face, but you'll throw light everywhere. You won't be able to do what we're doing here as easily. Um, when we do the umbrella day, I let Dave go crazy and we get a black background with a shoot through umbrella. We will do that again in 2018. You're also asking about her loss of pupils in that last shot because of the softbox. Loss of pupils. Yeah, she doesn't have any pupils actually. That's interesting. That, that kind of stuff never bothers me, but if it bothers you, it's just a matter of moving her head up or down. Um, yeah, or you know, turning the, turn, you know, just moving her eyes slightly. It's actually kind of freaky. She is actually a robot. I mean, I don't know if you guys know that about Marissa. <laughs> she doesn't have any pupils. Oh, you're so clever. Okay, so let's try it without the reflector first. What, the meter? Ah, uh, yeah. We're using this Sekonic, uh L308 meter, so if you're looking for a light meter, um, it's a pretty good inexpensive light meter. It's actually the first light meter I ever owned. Can you believe that? Yeah, I mean, not this version of it. They've, they've upgraded it to do whatever they do. Okay, well, it's dark on one side. We gotta maybe... It's also overexposed, so let's get yeah. Should I by a smidge. Probably. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I think we're getting there. Maybe move her closer to the light. Yeah. Yeah. Then I can lower the power more. Yeah, and we we'll go with the power. Thanks, Wow. That looks really. Do you know what the spread is on that thing? It's wide, yeah, about that wide, right? They're asking if uh, the shoot through umbrella caused different catch lights like this caused the box. Yes, yeah, so if you have an umbrella uh, as your source of light, uh, it will change the catch light. And actually, that's a, a, 
That's what old-fashioned photographers used to talk about all the time. Wow, my catch lights are umbrellas because, you know, it's a... No, but that is actually important. If you want a certain catch light, some people like round uh, in the eyes, you could switch to an umbrella for that reason. Um, these are going to be square because the box is square. And Marissa has no pupils because she's pupilless. Um, it's kind of freaking me out, but I like it. Um, That doesn't bother me. I don't, I don't mind the lack of pupils. <laughs> I mean, I think it looks cool. So, again, everybody does it their own way. But yeah, if you don't want that to happen, you just have to make sure she's not looking right at the center of the box. So, it's again, it's dark on that side of her face again. I'm going to use my gold reflector. Um, and I'll bounce a little bit of light back in so we have some more separation. I think I'll use it in the... This is an oval. <laughs> that should be good, right? Looks pretty good. Fill it in. Now she's got a little gold, a little brightness going on. She looks like a mom from like a 50s, uh, you know, uh, yeah? You're like a 50s mom. <laughs> Eat your Ovaltine and then go to the fallout shelter. Well, like a really attractive mom. Well, <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Questions? Going pretty good? Simple, right? So far, so good? All right, so that's kind of keeping the light more or less like that. Um, we can also get more dramatic with it. Like, let's say we leave the light more like this, but we have our face towards the camera. We can start thinking about where our shadows fall if we want to get a little more, like, like a little bit more dramatic. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think we'll push it closer to her. Yeah, exactly. So now we really want to start thinking about the shape of the light. If we want to go, again, that's more of like a beauty light that we did to start with. This is going to be heavily lit from one side. Um, and depending on where you put the box, right, like it's kind of in front of her still. So what's going to happen is some of the light's going to come around here, give a little fill over here. Uh, it will drop off, uh, you know, at the edge of her head. You can move the light further back. We'll actually do both so you guys will see the difference. Okay, so if you don't have a light meter um, and you want to use flash that doesn't have some kind of a TTL system, uh, your best bet is usually to set your flash at the middle point of power. Set your camera however you're going to set it for the space, which we did at the beginning, right? And make a photo. Then you can look at your histogram. I mean, I was joking about that, but you can look over at your histogram. The only problem with histograms is that you can see, like we can see on this photo, right, that it's, it's well exposed, right? Everybody's happy with that exposure. But look at my histogram. It's way over this side. That's because most of the photo is black. So you can be tricked by it a little bit. Um, so you do want to be a little careful. You can, do, you can get a device called a uh, digital target. I find it to be super useful, and basically it is a, uh, it's a little pop-up thing. It's got silver, is that one of your things too? Peter does everything. Uh, it, it has, it has a white, uh, gray, and black lines, and what you basically do, do we have one? I usually used to have them all around. You basically put it uh, toward, in, front, in front of the, uh, the subject that you're photographing, and you photograph it, and that should give you a perfect histogram, because one is white, and one is gray, and one is black, so you'll get three spikes and you can actually adjust your exposure until they're, they're centered, and that'll give you a normal, normalized exposure. Um, it's pretty useful. I use it even though I have a light meter when I need to be like dead on for certain things. And also, it is neutral, so you can use it for white balance. Um, it is called a uh, digital target. Photo somebody makes it, but it's called, if you do digital target, you'll find it. I think they sell them the other side of gray cards now. Yeah, I've also seen small ones. What I like, this comes in all different sizes. I like the one that's like 14 inches because it's just about the size of somebody's head. They usually have like the reflector yeah. on the other side. Yeah, it has a little silver reflector on the other side. You can also use the or you can, Capture One. Well, and if you're in Capture One or any kind of tethering software, you can, you can look at your, your, your RGB numbers um, or you can just look at it, right? I mean, I'm looking at the raw photos so I can actually adjust to there because remember, your meter is only giving you like mathematically correct exposure. That's not necessarily how you want it to look. So you always want to remember that. No matter what system you're using, whether you're using a TTL metering, you're using a handheld meter, you're doing it with a, a digital target, once you look at the final picture, if it doesn't look the way you want it to look, adjust it, right? You're the artist. That's what my mom always says. Okay, so. Yeah, so we're gonna do something a little more dramatic now. Yeah, and this is gonna light like half of her face, for the most part, uh, lit, and then half in the shadow. Yep, right, now now we've got like some mood, right? And we can play around with that. We're just getting a little bit of light on her eye here, over here, right, which is kind of cool. 
you can adjust how much or how little you, of that you get. Oh, okay, the baby's on the move. And by pushing the light back and forth. Assuming you keep the light the same distance this way from the model, the exposure should be the same for the most part. So you don't really have to keep messing with your exposure. Um, you know, her face itself will stay the same in the neutral, but now we're getting more eye, right? Right, and then if we want to get even less, we can go back. Nice. Do you have like a little, who has a pocket mirror? Nobody carries a pocket, oh, because everybody has phones now. People used to carry mirrors, remember that, Peter? <laughs> I'm just saying, you, you remember what I'm talking about, right? All right, now we got more. I say you think I'm crazy, but I'm telling you, people used to carry mirrors around. You, you know people used to carry mirrors. You're looking at me like I'm insane. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so now it's going further back, right? And we're getting, now we're even starting to get some shadow here, you right? You have the small silver reflector behind that also if you want. Cool. I moved it back to a little bit. Yeah, that was, oh, we're back, now we're back at the original, uh, original position. Okay. Well, now I was going to try to just do like a little tiny reflector. Because I find that usually you're using a big reflector, and if you ask me, hey, Daniel, what reflector should I buy? I usually say the biggest one that you feel like you can comfortably hold, because almost always you want a big reflector. But sometimes having a small one is good, because like in the situation where, I'm going to find something. Do you know a piece of tinfoil? We're going to stop production. You know what would be great here? A dot. <laughs> Seth's going to find it for me. Seth's good like that. Nope, he's not going to find it. It's not like anybody's watching or anything. Any questions while we're waiting? So we're just moving that light this way to mm -hmm. get more light on the other That's side right. of the face. We're not tilting that Nope, all, not yet. Right? We could do that, though. Do you want to do that? Well, no, because I, I know you don't want to put any light in the background. So. Well, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Oh, so, all right, hold on. Oh, we'll do this first. Yep, perfect. You're going to do a whole, like... No, just a little piece. I just want to put punch back in our eye. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, this is actually for my lunch later. It has nothing to do at all with the demo. No, because I just wanna, like, we just keep seeing a little bit of a ride, and I'm wondering if we can just throw a little bit of light back. So, this is probably gonna be tricky to do in a, in a very bright space, but I will try. Mm, just a little bit. Not a lot, but it's there. And you can actually add a little, a little, uh, a little extra catch light action. So, you know, see the difference. You can make it convex, though. Yeah, we could do all kinds of stuff. We could make it convex. We could make it concave. I'll save that for later for my lunch. <laughs> um, but the question was, let's say we wanted to get more light on there and we didn't have a piece of tinfoil or whatever. Or we, are you going to try to turn the light? We could actually just start to turn the light, sure. And it might start to hit the background. It might not. Let's see, let's see what happens. It's still pretty close to her, so... Um, we might be able to get away with it without making the background lit. You know, part of it is going to be playing around a little bit um, in your space, it, you know, with a different person, with a softbox you've never used before. You know, you get, you'll get used to things. Um, then I'll look straight at the camera still, I think. Yeah, we got a little bit of light over there. It still stayed relatively dark. It's not black back there anymore, but I think that's still acceptably dark. Um, and we got a little bit of light over there, too. You get a free cookie. I don't know where you're going to get it from, but you will get a free cookie. <laughs> Just go to the bakery and be like, Daniel said, free cookie. Okay. And, you know, we can still do this dramatic light and still bring our reflector in. Maybe do white this time so it's more yeah. subtle. It's wobbly. Ooh. Good. Fill it in with white. It's going to be a little bit more subtle. You know, now we've got shaping, right? And, but we're filling in the shadow. So it's not flat light across or you can play around with this if you like this style. Um, I feel like this shadow here would bother me at this point. Where I, so if we were going to do this, I'd probably raise the light a bit, right? Your shadows are going to come, you know, your nose is basically, is the, our face is going to be the most common thing to put a shadow, right? So if the light's almost straight across, you're going to get a, a shadow there. If we bring the, plus she has that little cheek thing going on, little cute cheek things. So if we bring the light up a little bit, it'll tip, tip it forward. That would change the direction of the shadow, right? We can move the shadow to create whatever look we want. 
you know? We're gonna make you look sinister today, I decided. So we're all about sinister for, for Marissa. She was, you know, she used to be good, but then uh, Superman dropped the chemicals and made all of her hair fall out. No, that's Lex Luthor. Yeah, let's do a reflector. Sorry, I was slacking off. We need somebody to hold a reflector. No, no, she likes this one. Do you like this one? Can we try the smaller one so we can see how it looks? Oh, you want to try a smaller one? Yeah. Well, my said you wanted to go to silver, so I said to switch what smaller one? Where is it? I don't see it. Uh, he's promising stuff that's not here. Well, no, that's too late now. Now she wants it. All right, we'll use one of the Brooklyn reflectors. All right. Now, don't get excited about this because you can't get him till after the first of the year. Seth is already uh, running behind on production. He makes these in Brooklyn himself. Okay. In Bushwick? No? Is that where you live? I don't know. <laughs> Apparently not. <laughs> I know, but I don't know the different parts of Brooklyn. All right, <laughs> All right so you, you always want the reflect, re even though you want to bounce the light back in from where it's coming from, you also want to think about where, you know, you don't, you don't necessarily want to like light her from underneath, usually. So even though the light's technically tilted down, you might immediately think to do this, but you're probably still better off keeping it flat. See the difference? That will get more light technically, but this is going to be better. Right? Let's try that. Good. They're asking if this is called feathering. Oh. Oh, wow. You did a good job with that. Oh, look at that. She's not messing around. You made Marissa look all dangerous. It's a smidge underexposed, I think, but I think it kind of works. You can see her pupil. <laughs> Yeah, she does have it, just in case you guys are worried. One thing you can do in Capture One if you're a little unsure, like once you get going, if you don't want to keep pulling the meter out, is you can actually kind of tweak your exposure. Actually, it's not really. It's, yeah, it's yeah, a, one a, yeah, one tenth of a stop underexposed. <laughs> Dave, you're one tenth of a stop underexposed. Fix that. All right, so, um, yeah. So a, a question online was, uh, is what we're doing with the light called feathering? Yeah, Sorry. more or less. Using the edge of the light is kind of what feathering is. We're not really using the whole edge, but. A lot of times when you're shooting with a light, um, people's initial thought, like when you first get a light, right, you just point it at your subject. But a lot of times using what is the edge of the light or the feather of the light is actually a nicer way to, to go. Um, it generally allows the light to spill around the subject a little bit more. Like so earlier we were definitely um, doing more of a feather type thing. Now it's pointing a little more at her. Maybe go even a little bit like more. A little more angular? Like more. That's a professional term. What do you think, Peter? Is Honey Badger can handle it? It's doing a good job. Jamie, when you say increase the exposure, you're just increasing the power of the light, or you're doing... That is a good question. So I said increase the exposure to Dave. What, what he did was he turned the light up uh, by one-tenth. Now, once you're set in a studio environment like this, you should probably not change your camera settings, right? Unless you want to do it for a creative reason, like more depth of field or whatever. Once we're set, we're set. Like, the camera is just a box at this point. The light changes everything. So we're gonna stay at the, whatever our settings were. Uh, whatever, I think they were 5.6. Yeah, 200 of a second, 100 ISO, 5.6. I mean, there, there's gonna be times where you might have to change that. Let's say you're trying to uh, get more shallow depth of field or more deep depth of field would be the most obvious time. You might even change the ISO if let's say your light wasn't powerful enough. Um, this light's pretty good though. We're only on five and it goes to 11. Doesn't really go to 11, but it goes, yeah. That's a spinal tap reference. Nobody makes a light that goes to 11. That could be our thing. Tell them to do that next, next iteration, the Daniel version. Oh, we were talking about this, by the way. And if you guys write to Interfit, we're thinking, because they have the orange, no, we'll call it yellow one already. We're thinking like a red and white checkered one would be the Daniel Norton version. So if you guys want to write to Interfit and suggest that, um, and then there could be just a white one that is, for, that is the Seth version, <laughs> Seth Miranda. <laughs> White with uh, with Haynes. <laughs> oh, cool. Now, one thing you're going to find when working with, with, with one light and only a reflector is that if we do start doing more dramatic things, like putting the light very far to the side, even though like she's got light on the side of her face, this right here, this exposure is right at the point where we don't really want to bring it up at all, right? 
So you're, you're definitely like working at the edge of your exposure. If we start to bring this down a little bit to where I might normally do it, this side of our face will start getting more muddy and dark. So you gotta kind of watch your ratio unless you are okay with losing detail. But I think uh, Dave's doing a good job as always. So we have detail there. And again, I can blow it up really big because Marissa likes that. Look at that, like, like that spot right there. Oh. Actually, I think that's dust on the sensor. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You're, you're. She's eating too much chocolate. I don't even know if that's true, right? They always said that when you were a kid. I think they've now discovered that's like not true probably, right? Chocolate is good for you. I was never on board with that chocolate's not good for you thing. Come on. Well, that's pretty nice. Right, so you see we got some shape. Um, because she brought her chin up, we can see the shadow is coming this way now. It's nice, you know, it works. I think I kind of, um, I have an idea. We might double reflect this if we can pull it off. I can hold one of them too. Oh, you're gonna hold one? Oh. Where do you want this one? Oh. Perfect. Okay. So Marissa's got a reflector now. I might try to like, can you scooch forward a tiny bit? I might try to scoop a little bit on your hair with the gold, just to kind of, no, no, it's still Gigi on there. You're doing her face. Should I go underneath or? No, no, do it the same way you've been doing. Yep. I'm gonna see if I can catch any of this light. I don't know, cause I'm kind of far off to the side, but we're gonna try. All right. It's hard to say. Uh, move it around, Dan. Yeah, I see, I see it. Go back where you first. Or if you can just kind of pull back. Keep pulling. No, 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 your angle, angle, yeah, more like that. Okay, and then you're in the shot. Okay, you're out. Pull around. Yeah, I see it right there. Okay. I'm doing this in the Okay. Yeah, so Dave's looking through the camera and he's basically uh, looking for where you can see my reflector. This is especially good with like metallic type reflectors. You can kind of really see them. So he's basically adjusting till he can see the reflection uh, on the subject. So we'll see if he's doing anything. It might. Was Marissa's reflector doing anything? Oh, but then she put her head down. Sorry. Oh, oh you ruined it. Like that? How are we going to compare it to the last shot? <laughs> we do, I, I, I can do it. We'll just yeah, pretend yeah. like it worked. All right. Do the same, do the same yeah, I can do it. Yeah. All right. We got it. You got it? We, yeah. we got it. Right. We're good. Is that the same thing? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's up on the screen. Then it was in the shot. Just holding a giant reflector, I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. She's a little squinty there. She's like, what are you doing with those reflectors? So we got a little bit, hmm. The thing with reflectors is sometimes they're, ah. Yeah, it actually, it feels like it's, so you can see the difference in color. It doesn't really seem like it's bringing the exposure up at all, but it seems like it's adding a little bit of warmth to it, which is interesting. And somehow too, it's making her eye a little more closed. It's weird, but. Yeah, I don't know why I did that, but I know that's how we do it. So, you know, you can bring, you can bring lots of reflectors around. I mean, why not? Did yours do anything, Marissa? Probably not. Um, I was holding it here. Okay, good. <laughs> do we think that her reflector did anything? Probably not. No. Right? No. We can make it do something, though. To scoop more light. Yeah. So, like, panning. And then just... just that's going to be a lot. Go that's like good, though. The this is almost like that... Uh, well, we'll see how it looks right now. The eyelighter, the eyelighter exactly. Yeah. You guys see the eyelighter? Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah, it is like the eyelighter. Bam. Okay, so uh, if you know, if you guys want to have a version of the eyelighter, you just... tin foil. Tin foil in Brooklyn. There you go, tin foil in Brooklyn. <laughs> <laughs> Done. All right, so that gave a little bit of scoop under the eye of reflection, so we added that in. Okay, questions about that? Simple, right? Easy. All right, cool. So I think we're good. We're gonna let's do let's do like more of a classic, like right here. So we're gonna bring the light in more centered. Um, I was gonna put a bunch of different modifiers on it, but you know, I think part of uh, having one light is just messing around and seeing what you get with the one thing. So this this is the soft box that comes with it. Um, if you didn't catch the beginning, this is the Honey Badger, new from Interfit. Um, they make them in Brooklyn. 
No, probably not. Um, it comes with this little soft box. Um, it's about $299, I guess. Built-in radio. Well, yeah, the transmitter is extra. Um, but the, it has a built-in receiver, which is kind of convenient. Um, and yeah, it's, it's been pretty nice so far. It hasn't blown up on us, which is good. We, you know, we've had lights blow up before, so. It's been consistent. Yeah. Seth's given a nod. He's like, it's not bad, not bad, maybe. But yeah, it's pretty good. We started at Photo Plus. We were pretty excited by it, and uh, that's probably not up anymore. But we went to, we went to Photo Plus, myself and, and Seth, and we ran around and did stuff. <laughs> I don't know if you guys saw that. It was kind of fun. Um, so at this point, we're going to do more of like a, a, a butterfly style light, which is kind of centered on the, uh, you can sit down if you want. It's only $100 a seat. <laughs> 99 for you. Uh, you know, kind of in front, creating like the shadow. It's kind of a classic uh, beauty type light. It's ratcheted. So I waited for him to do that before I gave that feature. Although I feel like ratchet is not, it's like a bad term now, right? I'm looking for a young person. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah, I said that too, it right? Is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So not like the bad ratchet, like a good ratchet. <laughs> Am I saying something? I don't know. Can I suggest something afterwards? What if like we wanted to get, for example, like up to here? Oh now you're pushing it, aren't you? Yeah, we can do that. So now so the question is what if we want to get more of her? Right? Marissa charges extra them by she charges by the by the inch basically so we're trying to get only her head because it, otherwise it costs too much, um, <laughs> yeah. So if you want to get more coverage, actually we'll just do it as soon as we do this one. I think because of the position of the light, we're, it's probably going to have some fall off, mm -hmm. which may or may not be good depending on what you're doing. If you want to get like for a fashion shot, you want to make it even, mm -hmm. we'll need to do a different position, which we can do. Okay. We can definitely do uh, some further back shots for sure. Or yeah, go for it. Or a bigger softbox. Or a larger softbox. It would just block the lens at this point though. But that is a good point, yeah. I mean, I, it would be hard because of the position of the light um, to get to get her evenly lit top to bottom, but we, you know, we could do it. Anything's possible. One thing you gotta remember is you gotta get the client there, they ask for something, and you gotta, you gotta be able to do it. So, we mess around, we see what we get, but yeah, we can definitely get a little more of her. Like, they're like, I like those Wranglers. Let's get those in the shot. Wranglers, right? Come on. They probably are Wranglers. Huh. Are they? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to look because I don't feel like it would be appropriate. <laughs> okay, so we'll start with this. You wanted wide, right? Wide-ish? Well, it's, yeah, if you can do it. Well, she wanted from the from the waist up, but let's just do her face first because I think that's face-ish, kind of what we've been doing. Okay. So this is going to be more of like a butterfly pattern. Like, like, like you can see in this light where we went from the side, We've got, you know, again, our shadow is here, and we're a little bit uh, brighter here, darker here. In this shot, it should be more even across her face, um, with, and she's also happier, um, <laughs> with, uh, with the shadow all below her nose, you know? And the one thing you have to be wary of when you're doing this kind of butterfly pattern is that you gotta be very cautious of where her head is, right? Because if she puts her chin down, for instance, for instance, it's going to be, you know, very dark in her eyes. I mean, you could do this. See that? Yep. Underneath? Yeah, now you do it underneath you and get it real close to the... Yes. So could this be done with a speed light? Peter, close your eyes. Or close your ears. Yeah, sure. I mean, everything that we're doing here is, is uh, you could do with pretty much any light you have. In fact, if you had a hot light that was in a softbox like this, you could do the same thing provided that it was dark enough that the lights in the space weren't affecting your, yourself. So you could have any kind of light. The positioning of the light, the, uh, so this is, you know, with the chin down, uh, and we're filling in. Kind of cute, right? Um, but sure, speed light for sure. This close in such a small box, you would not have a problem using a speed light. Um, advantage here, you, you got it plugged in, you know, more power, blah, blah. It's yellow. They should make a yellow speed light. Does anybody have one of those? No, okay, we're going to work on that. Okay. What was the question though? You wanted more of her body, right? Yeah. All right. So let's say now we've got this shot of Marissa. It's cute. You know, this is for whatever. You know, Marissa is a pretty famous actress here in New York. This is for, you know, magazine. And they're like, oh, you know what? We like, you know, her Wranglers. So we want to get that in the shot. So we could just back up 
um, and see what we get for coverage. I have a feeling we're going to need to adjust slightly, but you will notice that our light is coming like this, so it's definitely closer to her to her head, you know, than it is to than you know her pants. So it's going to be darker down there. That might be okay for a portrait. It really depends. So I always recommend looking and seeing, right? Um, I mean, I could meter it, I suppose, but. Even that's not going to tell you really, unless it's like oh, three stops off. You're not going to know like if it's a half a stop, if that's going to work or not. It really depends on the fabric. But yeah, we can see, well, first of all, it's dark overall. Perfect. There we go. Thanks for coming, guys. That was the shot. <laughs> okay, so she stepped back to get, uh, to get more of her in the shot, which obviously made her dark. But we can also see the line where the softbox starts to, uh, to end there. So I feel like we're going to, in order to get this, we're probably going to want to yeah, angle, angle, go sideways like where we, where we started. No, oh, Dave's gonna do it. Dave's like, I'm not gonna change anything. He's first gonna raise the power. Let's get exposure set. Yep. What's that? Oh, what lens? Um, this is a Canon uh, 24 to 70, uh, 2.8 L Mark 17, whatever. The, the, um, they all have these long names on them. That's a Canon lens, 24-70. We're set at 5.6. It happens to be the 2.8, you know, whatever L lens, but you could, yeah. you know, we're at 5.6, so, so we're not wide open by any means, but it, it is uh, kind of the, it's my go-to lens for stuff because it's a good range for a full-frame full, full frame camera, as they say. Proper exposure of that. Um, yeah, so now her face is lit up properly, but, the way that you know, and of course, remember, her face is also a, a lighter tone than her pants to start yeah. off with, so if we're going to underexpose uh, you know, her pants, and they were already darker, it's, it's just not going to work. If, it, if she was all neutral, like if, if her pants were the color of her sweater, it, it may have worked. Oh, I see what you're doing. Hmm. Okay, so the question is about getting, like, the light up over top, I guess, with the regular light stand. You can um, get close to it with the regular light stand. You can just butt the, the stand right up against your, right up against your lens. I do that a lot, actually. Um, they also make arms that go on to regular light stands, or you could even put a Z-stand arm, depending on your stand. So it's possible. The arm definitely helps. And what's great about a C-stand is it's got a small footprint and, and a heavy weight load, so we use them you know, for everything because it just makes life. You're just going straight at it. Yeah. Dave's going like that that uh, like hardcore, like bang, bang. Uh, just to show you. Yeah. Oh, you know what? All right, let's do that first. I have an idea. Well, we're shifting, shift, we're shifting directions. Are you ready? It happens. First, we're waiting to see what Dave does. Bless you. Okay, any questions about this before Dave rocks it? So now just think about this before we even take a shot. Here's our light, right? And remember, there's always going to be shadow where there's no light. So if our light is coming pretty much flat like this, we're throwing a shadow directly behind her on the wall. Um, that may or may not work for you. It really depends on the style that you're going for. If you, the, a lot of this kind of uh, more recent kind of fashion stuff that's real casual and stuff it uses shadows and stuff. It's actually very popular. So if you like that style, this could work for you. Um, a ring flash would work. What, what's that? They're asking if you just use a reflector to light the bottom. Um, could we reflect to make the pants the proper exposure at the bottom? Probably wouldn't be enough. I don't think it would be enough, no. So you need more than one light? No, we never need more than one light. This is the shoot with one light class. <laughs> don't try to bust my class. <laughs> <laughs> but it could help. The, yeah. The, yeah, of course. I mean, actually. Like silver or something. It wouldn't hurt to have a reflector on like the ground. Put, like, the They're on the ground. Why well, would use the bright, the colorful one? Yep, throw it, on, throw it right on the ground. Did you see her throw that on the ground? She just threw it on there? That's not, well, now it's not going to work because the light's not pointed down anymore. Yeah, we've got to hold it up. All right, I'm going to need another uh, uh, assistant. I was going to call on you, but you have a book in your hand. <laughs> you got to go on the other side. Got to hold it up like a little table. And bring it up until it's in the shot. Yeah, it's going to definitely shoot up on the backdrop. But let's just see what it does. You're in the shot. Oh, yep, there you go. Is it like hitting it? Jiggle it so we can see. Yeah, I see something. <laughs> it could be for any of the lights in here, so we'll see what happens here. Yeah. 
That didn't hurt. We're definitely getting, uh, yeah, her face is a bit bright. We're getting some kickback. I can tell because the color shift, right? They're asking if there's a kit with the light and your kitty shirt. There is actually a special kit for the holiday special only uh, with the light and my cat shirt, yes. This is the hungry cat shirt. Uh, although maybe it's a full cat shirt. I can't remember what it's called. That definitely helped. Yeah, I mean, you definitely, and actually it's kind of cool because the uh, the gold is picking up on the, the gold in the Wranglers. So, not terrible, but I feel like we could get, get, get a better shot by coming sideways with the light when we first started. So let's let's reset, so step out, ladies. Mm -hmm. Actually, before we do that, just because I feel like it, yeah, bigger swords would help. Let's use the, let's go the opposite, just because I do things like this, and let's go put that little magnum reflector on there. Oh. So, does this just pull off? I'm just gonna yank at it until it falls. I'm allowed to break this, right? <laughs> it just clips on, right? It's like a, like, it I got it. Need help? Yes, I definitely need help. This is where you see me struggle with the light. Now you know why Dave's here every week. There we go. It's kind of fun. It's like a little tent. Pyramid shaped. If you put candles in there, smoke will come out. Uh, grid, no grid? Grid, why not? Yeah, We're just going for it. So this is a, uh, what's cool about um, a lot of the, some of these less, less expensive lights, we'll call them, but in this one in particular, the Honey Badger, is they use this uh, S mount or Bowens mount. Um, and that means that you gotta open up a world of uh, modifiers, right? So maybe Interfit didn't have this exact reflector, but we, had, we found one from Photix that, um, that works. So it should all be compatible. We're gonna find out live on, uh, YouTube. There you go. Yep. Don't break it. We have another session. All right. So, um, <laughs> this is a, this is gonna be a punchy, punchy hard light. Direct shadows, right? We also have a grid on it to keep the spread down. It'll probably cause a bit of a vignette with the light. Um, and we're gonna just go for like kind of a hard. Uh, and I think probably point it like almost aim it. I think just probably like chest ish, so that it kind of feathers Come off. Up high? Yeah, like up and. Something like that. We'll see. It might need to be a little tilted, but we'll try it. Go for it. Oh, yeah. Well. yeah, let's see first. Oh, we'll, should we meter it? Let's do things like they do in, on TV. What does the light meter? No light meter? Hmm. Oh, go through this again? Mm -hmm. oh, he has it. He has oh, Dave's got it. Yeah. No, well, that makes sense. All right, I won't touch it then. I'll just stand here. Any questions? Thoughts, concerns? I see you're concerned. Oh, you're like, yeah. what are you doing? No, it's because um, earlier when you had that light so high up, I was mm -hmm. wondering why is it like, like the bottom lip of the thing is like at this level instead of like lower? Right, well, that's a good point, right? So why was it so high before when earlier I said to put kind of it centered? Well, because it was in the shot otherwise. Oh. So we, we have to think about that in this position, you got to have it a bit higher, which also generally makes it so the model's going to have to keep their chin up. So you got to really work around that. Um, one solution to that, but you'd need two lights to do it, so that'll be in the two light class, um, is uh, I often use lights with, with umbrellas, and I'll push them in close together, so I have one source from, from two umbrellas, and then you can come up between it and shoot. So we do that sometimes. Oh, that's an interesting shadow pattern. Yeah. It probably won't look like that, but we'll see. I'm, I'm at minimum. We're at minimum power. I'm like Maybe. This could be amazing or terrible, so everybody get ready. That's how you know that you're working in the right direction. You never want it to be like, oh, this is going to be pretty good. Like, it's either going to be awesome or it's going to be terrible. Well, that's not terrible. <laughs> Stage light. Yeah, it's got a very punchy look. Now, what's happening here, though, is this is not helping the idea of the, the Wranglers. That's because we have a grid on there, right? So let's remove the grid. Oh, they probably have, now we're going to have to change the exposure, I think, on the camera. And the reason for that is we're as low power as we can go. A grid is like, so a grid for people who don't know, is basically, it narrows the throw of light. Oh, it's so funky. Oh, look at that. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Like, what would you call it, like a medium-sized pizza? Or is that like a personal, personal size? What do you think? It's like a Domino's small. Yeah. Uh, would, would you eat a pizza that big by yourself? I have before. You have before, all right. 
That's like the size of a good diner waffle. Ah, that is also, yeah. Wow, that's a huge waffle. Yeah, that's, no, that's, that's an actual waffle. Yeah, what's that Come on. Waffle. Wow. My waffle maker does not make it that big. Yeah. It's a proper Ooh. Greek diner. That's yeah. a I've never seen a waffle that big in my life. I've seen pancakes that big. But we don't want to go into that conversation. Yeah. All right. Can you say punchy right? What does punchy mean? Right, exactly. She called me Seth. Thanks. Sorry, Daniel. That makes you so happy. She called me Seth. All right, so what do you say? Seth, tell us what I mean when I say punchy. You're mic'd up. I'm so used to his classes, so. See how she called me by the wrong name? That's what my mother does. She calls you Seth also? Oh, no, no. Yeah. She calls me by all the all my other siblings. That's really bad. No, she no, she calls me by my other siblings' oh, names. Okay, so. I'm so sorry. Uh, Except my apology, please. I'm not going to answer your question. Oh, no. no, so the question Seth, was, uh, question? no, listen, calling me Seth would be a compliment. Seth's an amazing photographer. Uh, and he's got gray hair. Okay. If I could. Gray if hair I, too. Not bad. I didn't change the settings. Oh. Oh, interesting. Okay, we'll deal with that in a second. Punchy. When I say punchy, I'm talking about contrasty light. Generally, um, when your light is over, overall has a, has a, a contrast to it, um, I often use the word punchy because it sounds cooler. Yeah. Yeah. So we can see all the specularity, uh, like in, in her. Uh, what do you call that stuff that's under your eye? I makeup. Eyeshadow. Yeah. You know, the lips, we see the specularity, the, the, the highlights blowing, that, that's the specularity. We also have like dark shadows here. You know, this is, this, is, this is a punchy light source. Contrasty, yeah. Which is great for bringing out texture and great for a style, but it's not giving us those jeans which are dark. So to get the jeans, I suspected that wasn't gonna work. We could either, somebody had shouted this out earlier. Are you gonna take credit for it? Because I remember who it was. A bigger light source would have done it, right? A big light source that's like five feet or whatever, like this close to her would cover her whole body, which would make it even. We don't have that. Um, oh, we have that. Yes. Right, but the reflector can only bring up your shadows. It can't light the subject, right? Because the reflector has to reflect. You light becomes less intense over distance. So when you bounce the light off a reflector, it's got to go to the reflector, then back to the subject. So you're losing light. So what you want is a larger light if you want to have more coverage. Although you did just come up with a great idea without even thinking of it. No, let's use this still, and we'll make our light bigger by using the reflector. So this is the, Gavin Howey left this. <laughs> he was like, take that. <laughs> Thanks, Gavin. Someday he's gonna come back to New York and want it back, it'll be all dirty. Take, take so we can turn this into our light source, right? This is, this is the uh, diffusive material that uh, is inside that reflector. So we could turn it into a light source that is large. Right, that should work. All right, you wanna be a light stand? Good. This is the what I call the floppy part, because it's floppy. A strip box. We could do that if it was if this, if you wanted to switch to a strip box, which is basically a different shape of a soft box. Uh, as long as it was long enough to get the the coverage, it would work. Sure. We love to blind them. They won't be blinded in a minute. If you're, you, know, you got to be over here. You're going to be the light source, so you're going to be right here. Just like that. And what we're going to try to do is light the whole panel and get as little as possible light in the background. It's not going to be the earlier question about umbrellas. Same situation here. We don't have the edge control, which means that it, with this solution, we're going to end up getting light on the background. We're not going to be able to help getting it on the background. But I don't, I don't care about that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What are you saying back there, Peter? Yeah, well, the problem is if, if I take the reflector off, there's no internal reflector in this light, right? So it's going to go. That's why I have the reflector on there. It'll fill the reflector. Mm -hmm. It'll still transcend enough. It'll still Always a critic in the audience. Always a critic. <laughs> we could take it off. We could put it on. He just doesn't want a Fotix item on his light. <laughs> Even if it's watching right now going, Peter! Sorry, if you guys had, if we didn't have a, a version, if you guys, uh, I will take it off though, just to show you, Dave's gonna be mad when I do this. Hold on, Dave. Okay, so do you see her shadow on the back? Uh, her being, I don't know your name, sorry. 
Harper. Do you see Harper's? That's because the reflector is going to prevent that. Right? That's why I didn't want to do that. But, but all, those are, all those are good ideas. Remember, be willing to try whatever, um, unless Peter suggests it. Then you're just like, no. <laughs> You know, we did a wedding here. It's got to be almost two years now. We got to do that again. We, we did a, a wedding ceremony, and, and Peter gave away the bride. It was pretty awesome. He had a tuxedo. Very nice. All right, so we're going to see if this is, this is going to give us better coverage. It seems like it might, although I feel like it's still too high, but we'll try. A bit. Oh, yep. We're still a bit high. We want to get to... Uh, Get the light lower to get some coverage. There we go. Probably want to get bring the whole thing, thing down lower, right? Okay. Yep, everything lower. So if we... Mm -hmm. And then raise the whole thing up. If we bring this down even more. Yep, no, that's good, but you have to raise this up. Because otherwise, we're, I, can't, I can see it's on our face. Oh. I mean, just raise the stand. Light pointed down, stand up. Sure. Yeah, there you go. Okay, what? Well, Ooh. Asking you, asking Seth. Could you just iterate why this isn't a soft box? Okay. So why isn't this a soft box? Is the question. Well, it says right on the package, it's a reflector. I mean, <laughs> no. So a soft box is is going to contain your light, right? So this is like a soft box in the sense that a soft box is basically a piece of diffusion, you know, that the light goes through. Sometimes two pieces. What a soft box, um, what makes a soft box kind of what it is is your sides, right? This is preventing light from spilling all around. It's giving us a directional, but soft, because of its size, light source. So thus, soft box. Um, you know, oh yeah, there you go. That's getting better. So we're even-ish. I mean, it's side light. We have to play around with it a little bit, but we're getting the, the pants look roughly what they look like to my eye. She looks well lit. Actually, the side light is bringing out the detail on the sweater really nicely. Look at that. Somebody had to sit there and knit that sweater, man. Oh, maybe, yeah. Um, there's lots of problems with this, obviously, but you're getting the, the concept. But if I was trying to do this and all I had was this, I'd, first I'd be sad. No, but I would, you could move her further from the wall. You could use a reflector. Actually, let's just do that. You want to help? You could hold the floppy part. That was me, sorry. I banged my, my thing, I get excited. This is the floppy part, you're just gonna hold it like that. Yeah, maybe maybe do the gold side. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I banged my mic. I dropped the mic. I didn't really drop it though. <laughs> Look at how happy that makes her. <laughs> She's a goofball. All right. So, any questions before we kind of wrap up here? Oh. You were not ready for that. What is that? That's how I stand for it. That's, a, that's like a rabbit pose. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Yeah. But yeah, we can see we're getting, you know, again, the pants are a roughly appropriate color. So as I see them with my eye, they're very, very dark. Uh, the sweater looks good. She's making a face, whatever. Um, <laughs> you know, and, and that's basically, you can make your light larger. Larger is going to give us bigger, more coverage, and that's basically how we do it. Questions? About that, anything online? Now, I mean, the other way, and we can quickly end like this because I think we're going a little bit over, is uh, let's go back to the original softbox and just back it up because that'd be your other way of doing it, right? Uh, backing it up, though, is going to create a little bit more of a, of a harder light because the, we're making the light smaller relative to our subject. Um, yeah, I have to show, I have to require it to show the interfit on screen as much as possible <laughs> or else they, they'll take the light away from me. I won't have it for the next session. Um, so uh, we're going to use the softbox. We're going to back it up. Back it up is going to give us more coverage, uh, but it's going to make the little harder. Um, and we'll see how we like it for comparison. Yes? Yeah, this would be great for headshots. I mean, you've got, uh, you know, in the beginning, you know, we were shooting... Where's the beginning? Like it's not the beginning, but yeah, like the beginning, like, you know, headshot-ish, you know? 
Yeah, I mean, I, I would say that um, if I'm going to do headshots as a, as, a, as a standard thing and I'm going to be in a dark space, I would like to have two lights, ideally. Um, but certainly one light can do it. And, uh, you know, this is a nice pretty shot um, of Marissa. Maybe if you throw a white background, it'd be like a lighter gray, you know, and then that way you can mess around with it a little bit. Of course, remember, too, we're also playing with this because we were actually feathering the light off the background. You could get the background more gray as well. So, yeah, this would be good for headshots for sure. Um, I think it's a pretty pretty decent size. Seems to work pretty nice. Makes Marissa look good. And when anybody is seeing her online, if you don't see her in person, it's terrible in person. Yeah. This light is making her look so good. No, if you want to join live, people are asking what the cost is. How much did you pay to be here? Thousand dollars, Lori paid, but everybody else is free. No, sure. Every Thursday, we're here uh, and they're free. Most things at Adorama are like that. Um, not the products, but the classes. We do a lot, a lot of classes here, um, and they're all free, or most of them, except for Seth's class. Um, so, yeah, I mean, sure. Anytime you're in New York, stop by. I'm here every Thursday at 12 and 3. Seth's doing a class on Monday. Phil Light. That's an important one. We could have used that today. We're basically doing it today. <laughs> yeah. Basically. Yeah. So now we got, again, coverage with one light. Again, the jeans look approximately right. Uh, a little we'll, bit over. Yeah. Yeah. Drop it down. Okay. Try it again. You know. Someone's actually saying Marissa for president. <laughs> Marissa for president. 2020. I don't think you're old enough. Oh. No. Yeah, not yet. No. You could be. <laughs> I do know lot. because I went to school. <laughs> I don't know. I think I did know. They taught you that in school. Did you that in school anymore? You could be in Congress. The House, I think you only have to be like 20 or something. There she is. She's running. I'd vote for that. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah, we're getting a bit of a shadow. You could get rid of that by moving her further away from the wall, by moving the light further away. You know, that, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of nice, you know, even coverage. Right? Simple. One light. Easy. I definitely think this size soft box is ideal for something like a headshot, like you said. If you were going to do more uh, full size stuff, I would, you know, you get this with the, the kit anyways, right? So you got it. And then if you, I would probably invest in something larger um, for this, maybe a big umbrella or something would be a good place to go um, if you want to do more full length stuff. But certainly the light's more than powerful enough. Like, what do you set it now? Seven point one. So we're rocking it. Yeah, plenty of power. Other questions before we wrap? Not that kind of wrap. I don't do that. Seth sometimes does. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I think we're gonna wrap up. Uh, we'll be back at three on Facebook for people who are watching online. If you want to compare them and be like, "Well, what you, you said something different last time." Well, yeah, probably. Uh, and then on four thirty or so, I, I, I <laughs> on four thirty or so on my Facebook, Seth tells me everything I did wrong. So he's making notes back there. So if you watch that one, it's basically Seth going, "Oh man, the chat room hated you," that kind of stuff. So that'll be fun. Uh, that's when I find out how it really went. <laughs> Yes. Six feet. Um, yeah, that's a good question. Not super relevant to this, but I'll, I'll end with that because why not end with something not relevant? Um, sure. The space to your, your from your subject to your camera, I generally like to stay, keep um, close enough that I don't have to yell at them. So if I want to get more of their body, I usually use a slightly wider lens so that I can stay roughly the same distance. Um, as you notice, we probably have done. We've been moving in and out with the lens versus the uh, versus the person for the most part. You know, uh, I try not to put anyone more than about ten feet away from me um, if I'm making a portrait because I got to talk to them. You know. Asking if you use post to fix shadows. Would I fix the shadows in post? If I knew how to do that, I might consider doing that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. If I did that, Seth would kill me. No, I, 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 yeah. If your shadows are too dense when you're doing your final images, you certainly can bring them up, uh, you know, using some kind of tools that are here that probably do that. This, I guess, would do it, right? You could bring your shadows up by like that. Well, that's actually bringing the midtones, but you get the idea. You can actually go to dynamic range. Yeah. Can... Top. Shadow. Uh, oh, there it is. Look at that. There's a tool for it. I really don't know. <laughs> no, I don't do it. Uh, eh, that looks terrible. No, don't do that. Don't ever do that. Yeah, it's not light. Just get just just shoot it right, and you'll be good. If you're talking about the shadow on the background, 
I would just move her further from the background. It, it would go away if we were if we were doing a job. We would take the time to, to do that. I mean, it's easy enough to get rid of that shadow. Um, try to shoot things as perfectly as possible in the camera. You have to remember too that if you're working commercially, if that's the goal, you know, for people, maybe it's not. But if it is the goal for you, you're probably going to end up being tethered into a computer, and just like you're seeing me now. Every single bad thing that happens on the thing, or a good, you're seeing it. That's the same thing your client's going to see. So you don't want to sit there and go, oh, yeah, this is, go oh, yeah, there's no detail there on the sweater. Uh, don't worry, I'll fix that later. Like, you don't want to have to say that. So you, you do want to do um, the best you can to get the shot that they're happy with in camera um, if you can. So I, I tend to say, no, stay away from fixing the shadows uh, later. Is that okay? Okay, good. Any other questions? Nope. Okay, 3 o'clock on Facebook, 4.30 on my Facebook if you want to see Seth. Um, he's very mean, too, so just... No, he's not mean, actually. He's very nice. Although, he sometimes... Uh, maybe Marissa will join us. It depends what she's doing after work. Sometimes Dave joins us. Okay, other things. Next week? Uh, open Next week is Open Shoot. shoot. Next week's Open Shoot. So if you guys have not been to an Open Shoot, or if you're not here in New York City, and uh, you could still have time to get a plane ticket... Um, we basically set up a couple of stations here, and we get a couple of models. We bring your camera, bring a memory card, bring your personality, and you'll get to shoot some of the stuff. We'll set up. We'll have some lights um, and models. You photograph them. It's a good community event. That happens at the same time, 12 and 2, 12 and 3, rather. We might do the live stream at the very beginning because I do, like, a little bit of a talk. Um, the following week after that, we're doing Dialogue Day again. Um, it'll be the last one of the year, so we shoot an actual dialogue in the... Adorama, which is kind of fun. Um, so that's for the budding filmmakers out there. Seth is doing a class on Monday, which is on the 4th, which is Phil Light. So um, that'll be that. We're also doing a critique on the 19th. Right. So if you guys want to submit to that, go to the events page to submit to that. Uh, follow me on social media if you want to see pictures from this, because we'll probably put some online. And uh, I think that's it. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Seth. <laughs>